Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to take a look at how to set up your Salesforce R for development. My name is Mohit. I am a developer advocate here at Salesforce, and I want to welcome you to the third episode of the series DevOps Essentials. First, let me explain you a bit about the series. In this series, we cover fundamental concepts around DevOps best practices for building and deploying Salesforce application. In case you have missed our previous episodes, be sure to check it out. First thing first, let's talk about creating your org for development. When it comes to building Salesforce apps, you have two options, developer sandboxes or scratch orgs. But how do you know which one to choose? Don't worry, we have covered this in detail in our first video of this series. So make sure to give it a watch. To create a sandbox org, you can either use the Salesforce setup UI or flex your command line skills with the Salesforce command line interface. For example, here I'm showing the command to create a sandbox environment. Another useful feature is ability to be able to clone a sandbox. You can clone a sandbox either using the Salesforce setup UI or using the CLI. Here I'm showing you the command to clone a sandbox. And for scratch orgs, it's as simple as using the Salesforce CLI command. Now, no matter which options you choose, it is crucial to match additions and licenses with your production orgs. Sandboxes inherit additions and licenses from production orgs. While for scratch orgs, we recommend using a feature called org shapes to mirror the baseline setup of a production org. To learn more about org shapes and their incredible capabilities, check out the link below for an in-depth video. Now let's move on to replicating metadata from production to your development orgs. If you're using developer sandboxes, you can easily refresh them from production, copying all the metadata and the configuration. This can be done through the Salesforce setup screen. But what about scratch orgs? Well, for initial setup, you will need to pull metadata from production to your source control and then deploy it to the org using the Salesforce CLI. Here is a command to generate a manifest file for all of the metadata in an org. All right, so once you have a manifest file, you can use this to pull all of the metadata. This command that I show you here, you can use to pull all of the metadata from the org using the manifest file that we previously generated. Whether you are using sandboxes or scratch orgs, you will need to pull metadata from production to the source control for better governance and change management. All right, so with sandboxes, users are copied from production and assigned profiles and permissions as configured. However, their email addresses are invalidated to prevent unwanted communication. To create sandbox only users, you can leverage the power of the sandbox post copy Apex interface. Check out this example code that shows you how to use sandbox post copy interface to generate sandbox only users. And what about scratch ox? It is recommended to create a sample Apex script to generate user records in your scratch ox. The Salesforce CLI allows you to run anonymous Apex to achieve this. Now let's move on to setting up user permissions for your development orgs. For sandboxes, the refresh process that we covered previously ensures that the right permissions are assigned to the users. For scratch orgs, you can assign permission sets to users using the Salesforce CLI command. Now here is a simple command that assigns multiple permissions to the set of users. All right, so now in addition to metadata, your production org may require packages to meet your various business needs. 
As a developer, you might be building on top of these packages. Hence, it is essential that development environments contain the same packages as production. For Sandbox, the refresh process ensures the packages used in production are installed in the Sandbox. For Scratch Orgs, the Salesforce CLI provides command to install the packages. For example, here is a simple command to install a package. Notice you will need to know the package version ID for it to work. All right, next move on to how to handle metadata for which metadata API, MD API is not available. Now there are times when some of your production SOR configuration is not yet supported by the metadata or MD API. Here is a list of metadata for which MD API is not available yet. This is not a problem for sandboxes as the refresh process carries over the metadata even for those that do not have metadata API. However, for scratch orgs, we recommend that you either maintain a document with detailed steps to replicate configuration manually or use Puppeteer or Selenium, an open source tool to write scripts to execute configuration steps automatically. All right. Next, let's discuss mocking integrations in your development orgs. Salesforce apps can be connected to third party systems for data or process integration. To prevent from mistakenly sending sandbox data to third party services, it is recommended to create mock endpoints for testing in your development orgs. When building integrations, consider using custom metadata in your application code. This allows you to easily switch integration endpoints between production and your development environments. To update the endpoints for custom metadata and name credentials, you can write custom scripts and automate this entire process. And what about seeding test data in your development orgs? Both developer sandboxes and scratch orgs start with no data. To make testing easier, it is recommended to generate a sample data similar to the production. Note that the sandbox have limit on amount of data that they can hold. So usually we recommend to keep only test data. And also make sure you do not pass any sensitive data from production to the sandboxes. Now a tool that I highly recommend to look into is to generate your mock data for testing is an open source tool called Snow Fakery. Now the link for this tool is shared in the video description down below. Now for migrating data from Salesforce orgs to other Salesforce orgs or for local machines, there are various out of box and partner provided tools available. The Salesforce CLI provides data commands that allow you to perform data migration tasks like inserting and importing bulk data, like this command that lets you insert and perform bulk data imports. Now for complex use cases, we recommend exploring tools like SFDMU. SFDMU is an open source tool with both command line and desktop interfaces designed to make data migration a breeze. To wrap it up today, you've learned how to set up your development environments from creating orgs to deploying metadata, mocking users, setting up permissions and integrations and seeding data. All of these steps can be further automated by writing scripts in the language of your choice, streamlining the process for your developers. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you found it helpful. Check out our full developer quick takes playlist for the latest tools and resources to supercharge your skills. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming videos.